the Brave Bird is going to threaten to KO the Altera here with the boost. Brave Bird coming through. Bang! That's not a bang, that's a shield. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Ox here with another video. If you're new to the channel, we do upload Pokemon Go content mostly related to PvP. And if you're a returning subscriber, like at a year Aranda, thank you for the support. In today's video, we are taking a look at my first battles for the Holiday Cup using a team in which I was able to go 21 and 4 on the first day. This team consists of a Trevenant in the lead, Dugong operating as a safe switch, and then Talonflame in the back. The team has a sort of ABB look to it. We have both Dugong and Talonflame in the back, which are very weak to electric types. Once we lure out the electric type, Trevenant is pretty much a wall to most of those Pokemon. So the team performs the way you want it to. You lure out the hard counter, hopefully opening up the opportunity for Talonflame to sweep in the back. What I like about this team is that Dugong will often lure out the Vigoroth. This is going to allow Trevenant to come in and get a lot of farm. And oftentimes the Pokemon in the lead you're weak to a Trevenant, is going to be weak to Talonflame. Trevenant is going to be loaded on energy, so it's going to put the opponent in a very difficult spot. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please make sure you smash that like button. It really helps the channel grow. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. And without any further ado, let's jump into the first battle right now. All right, so this seems like a very promising team for the Holiday Cup meta. Did manage to go 21 and four on the first day using this team. The first battle right here is one that I did decide to put at the front of the video because it does a really good job of showcasing how strong this team could actually be. Trevenant into Talonflame, very poor lead, so we swap out into the safe switch, which is Dugong. And oftentimes you are going to get met by a Vigoroth right here. Vigoroth is everywhere in this meta. And now a very surprising thing to note is that when running these simulations on PV Poke, apparently my Dugong, which is a rank one, actually beats Vigoroth in the zero shields. So that is pretty huge right there. If your Dugong could actually win switch against a Vigoroth in these zero shields, oftentimes opponents aren't going to expect that. And of course that could flip because of lag and whatnot. But look right here, we are able to take switch here with Dugong in these zero shields. Talonflame comes back in. Now, obviously we don't have a great answer for Talonflame here. So winning switch isn't actually that important in this particular matchup. So what I'm trying to do here is actually sneak in a potential incinerate because we are behind on energy right here. I'm not going to shield this first move. If the opponent wants to throw Brave Bird, they could go right ahead. They are going to go for the flame charge right here. They're staying in this match, but we do sneak in the incinerate right there, which is very, very nice. Flame charge comes through. I'm gonna throw my own. And unfortunately I let the opponent sneak in a move here. So that is unfortunate of course. And I didn't think I could actually win here. So I decided to let the Talon Flame go down. I'm going to come into Trevenant. Hope I could farm this thing down completely. Look at how much damage we take from one incinerate right there. Getting to this move made me feel like the game was over. They swap out into Stunfisk and I was thinking, we're down a shield, but we kind of do wall Unova Stunfisk right here. So can we actually win this game? This charge comes through. I need to get to three seed bombs right here. One to get the shield, two to KO. I know if we can knock out the Stunfisk here, we could win this game because we are going to get a Shadow Claw off before the Incinerate registers for the Talonflame. So let's see how this plays out. We need to survive this discharge right here and still outpace to the seed bomb. We do survive. We survived the mud shots, but is seed bomb going to be enough? to take out the Stunfisk right here. Bang, there it is, Stunfisk goes down. Talonflame comes back in, Shadow Claw registers first. We take that game, hopping in to the first battle of the two sets I have to feature here in this video today. Let's take a look at some more battles with this team. Trevenant into Magneton, pretty nice lead right here. Obviously electric types are going to be a big threat for this team. Both Talonflame and Dugong are weak, so you're gonna wanna stay in this matchup here with Trevenant, of course. Magnet Bomb does come through and it does a lot of damage. Opponent swaps out into Greedence. I'm gonna bank that energy and swap out into the Dugong right here. And now Dugong going to tank that crunch. No defense drop is very nice. This is a winnable matchup for Dugong right here. Let's see how this plays out. Icy Wind coming through. Opponent is going to no shield right there. And we're going to just take some more damage. So Greedence, of course, both of these Pokemon are very spammy. Not getting the crunch debuffs is very fortunate for us. Gonna throw the Icy Wind right here. The opponent is going to let that go through. Should be able to completely farm down here from this point and maintain switch advantage. So body slam comes through. We do survive, they swap out to Vigoroth. Gonna get off this Icy Wind and then I'm going to swap out into my Trevenant. 
Trevenant is loaded on energy, so we're gonna spam a couple of seed bombs right here. This is setting up for a potential Talon Flame sweep right here. Remember, the Magneton is going to be dealing super effective damage with its moves, but it's also taking super effective damage from that Incinerate. So this should be a winnable matchup right here. Body Slam actually does not KO. Trevenant has a very dominant matchup here against Vigoroth, as you can tell, resists all of its moves. Seed Bomb comes through, takes out the Vigoroth, and the opponent comes in back in with the Magneton. We're gonna bring in the Talon Flame. This game is basically over. The opponent doesn't want the smoke. Backs out of that match, we take that game. Let's hop into the next battle. So we are slowly grinding towards A strength. Obviously, I'm not playing as much as in previous seasons, in large part because of the state of the game, but Holiday Cup looks like a lot of fun, so I did want to run some battles with this team that looks like it is very strong here for this meta in the early going. Gonna swap out here into Dugong. Obviously, Trevenant can win against Vespa Queen, but it really depends on landing Shadow Balls because Seed Bomb isn't doing every, anything. So I'm gonna swap out to Dugong here. I want to lure out the potential Electric type. If they have one, they come in with the Vigoroth instead. Now, obviously, if they have something like Vigoroth plus an Electric type in the back, could cause issues because you're gonna bring the Vigoroth into the Dugong in most cases, I feel. But at the same time, because we have Trevenant in the lead, they might decide not to bring Vigoroth because then they get walled, as you see right here. So. The, the team sort of works out still. I do really like the way this team is built and I think it is very, very strong. I'm gonna go for the Shadow Ball right here against the Vespa Queen. And the opponent is going to shield that up. I swap out into the Talon Flame. There's a Lapras in the back. Lapras is a bit of a core breaker for this team. It could beat all three Pokemon, but it can't beat all three by itself. And these three Pokemon also have some play against Lapras as well, especially with a shield advantage as you see right here. Getting the shield on the first flame charge is great news for us. I'm gonna throw this second one. This is gonna deal boosted damage right here. And the Lapras takes huge hit right there. Could basically just allow this to go down right here and then allow the Trevenant to farm down, get to another Shadow Ball, and basically take this game against the Vespa Queen. The opponent realizes the situation. They back out. We take that game. Let's hop into the next battle. And we are going to be leading Trevenant once again, this time being met by a Galvantula. So Galvantula right here, again, this is a matchup where you're going to want to stay in with the Trevenant. You can see Shadow Claw is really adding up. Do sneak in the extra one right there. I'm gonna let this go through. It is the lunge. Deals a pretty hefty amount of damage, but the opponent is staying in. So from this range, should be able to safely just go for seed bombs here. If they're going to no shield, then obviously Shadow Ball might make more sense, but two seed bombs will still be enough to take out the Gal Galvantula from this range. And hopefully that's the only threat they have for this backline. They come into Talon Flame, I swap out to Dugong. We get met by Jellicent here, which definitely is not what you want to see in this matchup here. Jellicent is problematic for the Talon Flame, and it's also a bit of a problem for the Dugong, but I'd rather see it up here against the Dugong, and the opponent is going straight for Bubble Beams, which I am totally fine with. Gonna spam these Icy Winds right here, lower the attack completely on this Jellicent. This is a very long matchup, so obviously it has been sped up because I don't want to bore everyone with this specific one battle right here. Icy Wind comes through. At this point, I guess, I could just go for Water Pulse, but I want to go for the lower cost energy move just in case they do swap out. I want to be as close to another charge move as possible here. I expect the Talon Flame to come in at some point, probably after they throw the move right here, which is what they do, and we are able to get to that AC win as a result. This is going to lower the attack on the Talon Flame, and now we're going to swap out into our own Talon Flame. The no shield there is very, very nice for us. This has to be a flame charge basically, or else they're going to lose. So going to no shield. At this point, I will start shielding because now they are doing more damage. We're behind on energy right here, so not the easiest matchup to get out of right here. Gonna throw the flame charge, boosting our own attack. Definitely don't wanna be going for Brave Birds here, lowering our defense, especially when you know they're going to be shielding. I do let the incinerate sneak through there, but it really doesn't matter at this point because the game is basically over. The opponent swaps out to reset the debuff, but that gives me a free incinerate. And at this point, the game is basically over. I'm gonna shield up this flame charge. Should be able to get to the next move. We're actually gonna go to end it in style with the Braver. This should be over. Kill on a talent flame, taking that game. Let's hop into the next battle. Some very nice performances so far with this team. Let's see what this opponent is going to bring for us in the lead right here. We have Trevenant into Abomasnow. Now Abomasnow, definitely a challenging lead right here. I'm gonna swap out melee into the Dugong. Dugong, in my opinion, is probably the best Pokemon for this meta. If you look at like the top 20 rankings on PvPoke, Dugong either like beats all of them or does 
very, very well against them. Like, there's nothing that just dominates Suzu, except for like Pachirisu, obviously. Aside from the electric types in the top 20, Let's put it that way, Dugong does really well against everything else. The electric types obviously are going to cause huge issues, but if you take away the electric types from the top 20, Dugong has played against just about everything. So here we see Haunter come in. They showed Sludge Bomb, so they're likely running the Shadow Punch here. Now this is debuff, but I still wasn't sure how much it would do because Haunter attack stat is so high. So I did decide to go for the safe roots and shield. Just commit to the farm down right here. We're behind on shields, but we'll see what the opponent does. They come in with the Obstagoon. So I'm going to look to throw a couple of seed bombs. Unfortunately, I take too long. This shouldn't KO though, so I should be able to get off the seed bomb here still. Hopefully get off too. I think at this point, the game actually started glitching out where I was doing like a three turn Shadow Claw per turn, which was very annoying. Maybe not this battle, but I remember it happening in a couple of battles and it was really really irritating but the opponent swaps down to Bombus so I'm going to farm down with the Talon Flame and from here we should be able to take this game just with straight incinerates but it's going to be very close still hopefully the opponent doesn't get a boost on Night Slash because if they do it's basically game over we're going to throw this flame charge right here this will likely get the shield from the opponent and then let's see if we can get to another one right here the incinerate does register we are at the flame charge but are we going to survive this night slash right here one hp and a dream no over tap you love to see it getting off this flame charge that's going to take this game once again very crazy finish to that battle right there but we're very happy to take it sometimes you just win with that one hp how it comes down to in some battles very fortunate to win that game hopping into the next battle we got trevenant into a big rock very nice lead opponent swaps onto god angela i saw the electric typing or rather the bug typing and i make a huge mistake here obviously bringing in the talent flame this is a lose con immediately i let the volt switches sneak through so badly played right here so if you see god angela safe switch into this match you have to stay with trevenant obviously I can't survive the Volt Switch here, and the Flame Charge probably isn't gonna KO, so no point to shield right there. The Volt Switch registers first before the Incinerate anyway, so I had to just give up Switch right there. Come in with the Trevenant, and now we lose alignment, and this game is over. So a huge mistake right there. Obviously going to cost us the match. Mistakes happen. Obviously I make mistakes every day. We all make mistakes. It's a part of the learning process of Go Battley. Happens to the best of us. You just gotta move on to the next battle. We still manage to go 4-1 in that set. Let's hop into set number two. Keep it rolling with this team. So jumping into the second set of battles, we got a quick glimpse of how this team performs from set number one. We got Trevenant into a Dusclops right here. Pretty nice lead. Uh, somewhat neutral, but Dusclops is pretty interesting because has a very wide array of movesets to choose from. Dugong comes in and we see the Vigoroth once again. Like I said, Vigoroth is often going to be the answer to Dugong. It's pretty good to lure this thing out because Trevenant, like I said, does wall it after, so I like this situation. But like I've said, Dugong can actually win this in the zero shields, which is pretty crazy. Not against all Vigoroths, but I've noticed against most Vigoroths, probably with poor IV spreads, my Dugong does actually win. In this case, I'm not sure if Icy Wind will actually KO. We'll see right here, but ideally, I'd rather get the shield, as you could see. Winning in the zero shields. This dugong is thick. And look at that. Graveler in the back. Super important to win switch right there. You love to see it. Now we get the Trevenant on the Graveler, keeping that Talon Flame away. And Talon Flame for Stus Clops is a much better situation to find ourselves in. So Fire Punch comes through. I do shield that up. Wasn't exactly sure about the moveset. Was afraid of like something like a Shadow Ball, for example. So wanted to be safe as opposed to blowing the game right there so dust cops comes in flame charge comes through we're going to just completely farm down here from this point and look to just throw some chip damage at that alolan graveler dust cops throws the ice punch going to get farmed down here even if they get to another move i really don't care not going to shield we should survive this they might swap out into the graveler we have the move ready they did not try to snipe just going to throw their energy right here this game should be over trevenant will come in we have a nice energy lead and we're going to be spamming out moves here with the seed bomb i believe seed bomb will basically one shot from this range so we do get to another one keeping that shield as well this game is over going to get off to a nice start here in set number two dust cops comes back in gets farmed down by the big tree let's hop into the second battle of this set I really enjoy this team. Highly recommend it if you have these Pokemon available to you. Lola Marowak, a bit of a challenging lead right here, so I'm going to swap out into the Dugong. Could also come in with Talonflame, but 
I just like going with the trusty Dugong safe switch here as we've seen it can win alignments against a Vigoroth in some cases. Meganium, it's, it was a matchup where I was considering not even throwing energy here to just get a huge energy lit after with the Talonflame. Like you go both ways, you come in with the Trevenants and farm down, you come in with the Talonflame. If I didn't throw the Icy Wind, obviously I would get a lot more farm here on the Talonflame and that was something I considered doing. But I threw the Icy Wind anyways, gonna come in with the Talonflame, so I've shown all three of my Pokemon. Opponent comes in with the Alolan Marowak, and they are running Hex here, which I've noticed a lot of Alolan Marowaks actually are running in this meta. So I decided to no shield right there, it was the Shadow Bone. Gonna throw the Flame Charge right here, and because it's Hex, I could actually get to another move right here, I believe. So gonna build up to the Brave Bird, and hope to get either the Knockout or the second shield here from the opponent. They do shield, so I swap out into the Trevenant. Going to need to start using my shields at this point and hoping for no debuff on the defense. Shadow Bone comes through. Going to get to the Shadow Ball. Gonna throw immediately because I don't want to take any more damage here from the Marowak. See if Trevenant could finish this game off against whatever is left in the back. It's a Talon Flame, so this is absolutely horrible for us, but Trevenant able to get to the Shadow Ball. Is this going to be enough to take out that Talon Flame? Bang! No, it's not. Survives with one HP, but we sneak in the Shadow Claw. So shielding here means we are going to win this game. Very well done by Trevenant to take out a Talonflame. Trevenant Talonflame counter confirmed. Not necessarily, but in that particular situation, yes, it was. And if you clan that Shadow Ball, it could actually flip the matchup. So Trevenant is pretty damn strong. Highly recommended for this meta. Frost last lead pretty challenging as well is going to dominate Trevenant here for the most part swapping out into Dugong. Dugong has a nice matchup here if you call the Shadow Ball and we are going to get off this Icy Wind right here. Now the opponent makes an interesting shield right here I was not expecting that but hey we will take it. Lickitung comes in this seems like a matchup that Dugong could win as well here so we could take alignment which means that Talonflame could be aligned onto the Frost Ass which is definitely what we want to see at this point in the game. Power Whip comes through. So this is actually a pretty rough matchup. Like it's not rough, but it's somewhat neutral because I forgot that Lickitung does actually have access to Power Whip. I was thinking of Grievance. So this is actually a match that Lickitung could win in some situations if we're not shielding. So gonna lose that right here, but I like the situation because I could either come in with the Talonflame and farm down or even the Trevenant for an extremely aggressive farm down. Decides to come into Talonflame because it's going to get us to a Flame Charge. I know they have Frostlass. Let's see what their third Pokemon is. It's a Digger's Bee, so this is absolutely great. Gonna throw this Flame Charge right here. And unless Digger's Bee is running something like Hyper Beam, this is a pretty dominant position to be in because even Earthquake isn't going to KO from this range. So Incinerate, going to get boosted, throwing the Flame Charge right there. Opponent going to throw the Earthquake, we know shield that, and I swap out into the Trevenant to get an energy lead. And because Shadow Claw is doing so much, we could just safely go for the Seed Bombs right here. It's going to get the shield from the opponent, and with the extra Shadow Claws, I should be able to shield this up, get to another Seed Bomb, which from this range should be enough to take out the very glassy Frostlass. Now it really comes down to outpacing the Diggers Bee. Even if we don't, we should survive a Fire Punch from here, and the Seed Bomb is going to knock out the Diggers Bee from this range so again a pretty tough lead right there still able to come back from it because of the power of the dugong safe switch the ability to farm whichever pokemon comes back in obviously debuffing the opponent with that icy wind really helps because you don't have as much pressure on you to shield any moves so i really like the situation that dugong puts you in as a safe switch vigoroth into the trevenant very strong lead for us right here opponent swaps out to sableye you could just instantly swap out into Dugong here, but I like throwing the chip damage in case we get a shield maybe. They don't shield, so that makes this even easier for Dugong right here. I don't really need to throw the Icy Wind, but I probably will because they are ahead on energy. So I'll look to throw the Icy Wind probably under charge here, try and get like one or two Ice Shards if I can. And that is perfect. We get one more Ice Shard through. We love to see it. Let's see what the opponent's going to come back in with. Most likely the Vigoroth, obviously and they do. I would like to get off an Icy Wind here. This really helps not only for chip damage, but again, lowering the opponent's attack is an excellent position to put ourselves in. And the opponent isn't going for the complete farm now because we would likely get to another Icy Wind here. So Body Slam comes through. We know Shield that. Going to come in now with the Trevenant and pretty much just look to farm, but they swap out to Frostlass. Here comes the Talonflame and this 
game is over. Look at that damage being inflicted from the incinerates. Avalanche comes through. We shield that up. Gonna throw the flame charge here just to boost our attack and get a shield from the opponent, which we do. And they're gonna throw another avalanche. We just have the shield here. Should be able to commit to the farm now with incinerate from this point. The opponent sees the writing on the wall. They don't want the smoke. They back out of the match. Let's hop into the next one. So we got Trevenant this time. What are we going to see from the opponents? It is a Unova Stunfisk, a beautiful lead. This is where you want to see the electric type, as I mentioned. And the opponents staying in, which instantly makes me think they must have something else in the back, weak to Trevenant. So after I take out the Stunfisk here, I'm going to want to preserve this Trevenant, of course, for whatever is hiding in the back. You could see I could have probably got off the C bomb there, but I wanted to farm up a bit more energy before swapping out. So I'm gonna throw a couple more Shadow Claws before throwing the C bomb here. Maybe the opponent even shields thinking that they could win this match, but of course they don't. Altaria comes in, I swap out into Talonflame. So Talonflame isn't the greatest answer here, but of course we do apply shield pressure with the potential Brave Bird. I am going to shield the Sky Attack, going for the Flame Charge right here. Let's see if the opponent shields this up. They do, which is huge for us because now the Brave Bird is going to threaten to KO the Altaria here with the boost. Brave Bird coming through. Bang! That's not a bang, that's a shield. Never mind. Getting ahead of myself. Too excited with the bang. Sky Attack takes us out. But we got the final shield from the Altaria. So Dugong comes in right here. The opponent has a Venusaur in the back. Not what you want to see with Dugong, but with a shield advantage, a very dominant position to be in. Icy Wind comes through from this range. I could farm down, but I decide to swap out into the Trevenant instead. Just get rid of this Venusaur. And yes, we will get farmed down by the Altaria. But Altaria literally cannot do anything to Dugong here, especially with a shield advantage. So this game is basically over. Dugong is way too healthy here. Way too thick. Sky Attack not doing anything. And the opponent decides to leave the match. We take that game and we go 5-0 in that set with this team. Like I said, 21-4 on the day. A very dominant team. So those were the battles in the Holiday Cup with this Trevenant, Talonflame, and Dugong team. I went 21-4 on the first day of Holiday Cup with this team, and I highly recommend it for anyone looking for a team to use in the Holiday Cup. The team performs in an ABB strategy. You got the hard counter to the electric types in the lead, the two Pokemon in the back, weak to electric, Dugong often going to lure out the Vigoroth, which opens the opportunity to farm with either Talonflame or Trevenant, putting yourself in a very dominant position. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.